Hi, my name is Tarlyn Eisenhower. I'm a sophomore theater major at Connecticut College, and this is my application video to the Gaiety School of Acting in Dublin. My first monologue will be Anna Ortiz's monologue from Jose Rivera's Sonnets for an Old Century. And my second monologue will be Melissa's monologue from Lives of the Great Waitresses by Nina Shengold. There's somebody. I don't know who he is. I want to take this time to apologize to him. I don't know your name. I don't know what you look like. You were in the Bronx about seven years ago. Let's see, it was outside the 180th Street stop on the two, close to one in the morning. I don't remember the name of the street anymore. But anyways, right there at the intersection, on the left as you go east, one night seven years ago, I saw you. Now, it was really dark on that street, and all I wanted to do was go home, so I'm walking fast, because I hate that street, and I almost didn't see you, but I did see you. Two men were holding you by the arms and they were slamming you head first into the front of a parked car. I couldn't see your face. The, the two men were laughing. You fell to the ground. I only watched for a second. I got out of there as fast as I could. I went home. I didn't call for help. I didn't call the police. I didn't jump in to break it up. I didn't go back later to see if you were okay. I didn't do nothing but run. Protect my ass. <laughs> For a second, I actually convinced myself that maybe you were just kids. Maybe you were just playing a game. I'm sorry. If you're out here, if you're hearing this, I was the one who walked away that night and left you there and I haven't been able to stop thinking about you in seven years. And I thought that maybe here, now, this would be the right time to say I'm sorry. This would be the time. Please forgive me, sir. Please forgive me. This is my first day of work. No, not here, ever. My parents had money, so nobody made me. Anyways, I came to the city to look for a job and no one would hire me. It's kind of like being a virgin. I'm not anymore, but I was. And I'm saying, nobody wants to be first. It's too much pressure. Anyways, my roommate said lie, and so I did. People think if you haven't done something before, you're an idiot. People can't know you. You don't know yourself till you're given a chance. And then all of a sudden, this new personality starts to swell under your skin, bursting through places you'd never expect, and nothing you thought you were makes any sense anymore. You're elastic. You're putty. You're making love to a man whose back ripples with muscles you've never felt, and you're feeling your body expanding and exploding and dissolving into air, into something like stars, and it doesn't seem possible that you can wake up the next morning to the same old alarm clock and put on the same pair of shoes. I don't want to lose this, this newness, this urgent, sharp knowledge that everything matters, that being good matters. I want to do everything well. I know. I'm a waitress. It's not what I dreamed of. It's not what anyone dreams of, but I matter. I do. There are lives at each stool at that counter. The man who has ordered his sanka and shredded wheat every day for 25 years, Otto. The woman who fought with her husband last night and so treats herself to French toast with her best friend who just had a mastectomy, Velma and Ruth. The man who panhandled the price of his coffee, Mohammed. I touch them. I give them the quiet sensation that once in their sad, uncontrollable lives they wanted a small thing, and I brought it. I got it for them. I bore them a gift. And that matters. You watch me. I'm going to be brilliant. I am going to be one of 